Hi there. Welcome to Dumpster PC's trip down memory lane. Look at the Socket 370. So to start off, we've got a motherboard here based on Via's 694T chipset. It's a Gigabyte 6 VTXE-A. And the Socket 370 on here, you can see, is blue. Gigabyte called this their blue lightning socket because it supported both the Coppermine and the Tolerton based Socket 370 CPUs. So these two families of CPUs were the last two released for the Socket 370. So we'll talk about them in a moment. But let's back it up a minute and talk about the first Socket 370 CPU that came out. This was a Celeron. It was based on a core that Intel called Mendocino. It had 128 kilobytes of level 2 cache and was manufactured on a 250 nanometer process. It was the first CPU that Intel released that was socketed after they went to the slot 1, in the slot one connection or SECC, single edge contact cartridge for the Pentium 2. And it was there because it was cheap. It was a cheap socketed CPU for their low end Celeron CPUs. So that was the first generation of Socket 370 CPUs, and it ran from 300 to 533 MHz on a 66 MHz bus. And it was first released in January 1999. Now fast forward to October 99, and here's where Intel releases the Pentium 3 Coppermine core that came in a flip chip pin grid array, so FCPGA Socket 370 format. And this CPU first ran at 100, 100 MHz frontside bus and then progressed to 133 MHz frontside bus if you had a B version. Eventually these Pentium 3s topped out at 1.13 GHz. In March 2000, Coppermine also made its way into the Celeron family with the Coppermine 128 core. This was to distinguish it from the full copper mine core that had 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache running at full speed in the Pentium 3s. So the Celeron ranged from 533 MHz all the way up to 1.1 GHz on the copper mine core. They changed from 66 MHz to 100 MHz frontside bus starting with the 800 MHz version. And these, so the copper mine was manufactured on a 180 nanometer process. And the last generation of socket 370 CPUs that we saw was called Tolerton. That was the core that it used. And this was used in both the Celeron and the Pentium 3 families. The Celeron retained its 100 megahertz frontside bus, but it got double the amount of level 2 cache, 256K. The Pentium 3 had two versions. One version had 256K and one version had 512K. And all Pentium 3s ran with 133 MHz frontside bus. So if you had a low-end Pentium 3 that ran with 133 MHz frontside bus and only had 256K, the only difference between it and the Celeron of the Tolerton family was the slowest frontside bus on the Celeron, 100 megahertz. So here we see the three different cores that Intel used on the Socket 370. Now each time Intel went to a new core, so they went from the PPGA Celerons to the FCPGA Celerons and Pentium 3s with the Coppermine core, and ended with the Tolerton core, the second generation so flip chip, so the FCPGA2. Each time it did that, there were electrical incompatibilities with the motherboards at the time. So if you had a PPGA motherboard, you wouldn't be able to run a copper mine chip in there. And if you had a copper mine motherboard, an FCPGA first generation, you wouldn't be able to run a Tolerton chip in there. There were a few companies that introduced adapters so that you could run, say, a Tolerton chip in a copper mine board. Linlin -Lin was one company that made an adapter that did just that. There were more adapters that did FCPGA, so copper mine, into PPGA boards 
and PowerLeap made a few of those. One of them was the Neo S370. Now, Intel wasn't the only one that actually used the Socket 370. VIA also used it for its Cyrex 3 and then its C3 CPUs later. And these were available up to 1 gigahertz. Sorry, up to 1.4 gigahertz. And VIA actually had four different cores in their Socket 370 family of CPUs. They started off with Joshua, although from all accounts, its performance and power characteristics weren't up to where VIA wanted. So they sent those out to reviewers, but the actual samples or the actual products that ended up on the market used a Samuel core. And then it was upgraded to a Samuel 2 core. And then the final version of the VIA C3 that ended up in the Socket 370 was the Nehemiah. So both Intel and Cyrex used the Socket 370. Now let's go and have a look at a Tauletan Celeron that we've got here, an actual Socket 370 CPU. So here it is. It's a little bit out of focus, sorry, but you can see it's got an integrated heat spreader, which is common today. And this integrated heat spreader covers the core. So in the copper mine CPUs, the core was left exposed. The flip chip was left exposed and you could see the die. This often left to crushed cores and other such bad things. So Intel introduced the heat spreader that we see here. Now there's 370 pins on these sockets and henceforth on the CPUs. And if we turn it over, we can see them. You can also see some surface mount components at the bottom. And if you look at how densely packed these pins are, they're actually very sparse compared to a, you know, a CPU that you'd find today that uses pins, which is basically just AMD. So they're large, very spread out compared to what you'd see today. And now, if we turn that over again, you can see the markings. So the S spec of this CPU, which you can't read because it's out of focus, I'm sorry, is SL5ZJ. And it's marked with 1300, 256, 100, 1 1.5. So this particular sample ran at 1.3 gigahertz, had 256K of level 2 cache, ran with a 100 megahertz bus, and ran at 1.5 volts. Now the Tauletans, the slower speed ones, were excellent overclockers, and many enthusiasts took them and ran them at 133 MHz frontside bus. So they would take a Celeron 1.0A, which was the first toilet and core, bump the frontside bus to 133, and they would have a 1.33 GHz system. And because at the time the Pentium 4 had such low instructions per clock, a high clocked Celeron or Pentium 3 toilet would actually be quite a performing system. So that is a sample of the Tauletan, the last Socket 370 core available. And here again is our Socket 370 motherboard. And in this motherboard is showing its age. You can see it's got one ISA slot, the 5 PCI, one AGP 4 time slot, and this is an AMR slot, an audio modem riser. This was popular at the time for OEMs that wanted to give their systems a soft modem, like a wind modem, where it was essentially the bare minimum of hardware to make up a modem, and all of the logic and brains behind it was in the actual drivers. And so they only worked on Windows, thus the term, wind modem. And these were very cheap, and so OEMs, you know, saw some use of them, but the general populace, the end users who built their own systems, that was just a slot that was never used. And we've also got three SD RAM DIMM slots. These DIMM slots could actually accommodate 512 megabyte SD RAM DIMMs, if you could find them and if you can afford them. So this board could have 1.5 gig of memory. That's a fair bit for a board of this age.
board from 2001-2002. And so that finishes off our look down memory lane at the Socket 370. Thanks for watching.